Hello, family. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be home. <laughs> Welcome I home. I see all my family here. Hi, everybody. Hi, Katie. Hi, everybody. <laughs> How does Thanks it feel for back? coming to this. Yes, thank you all for being here. How does it feel to be back? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just got here, so I haven't really, like, felt home yet, and they put me up in Fulton Market. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Uh, <laughs> I was like, I'd rather stay in hell than around these yuppies. <laughs> but... So far, so good. It feels good to be back in Rogers Park. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So one thing I realized when I was getting ready for this event with you is that Meaty is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. It is? And so is, <laughs> so is Nerdette, which is crazy. So we're both celebrating an insane passage of time, if you ask me. Yes. Ten years feels um, too long to yeah. have been doing this. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it. Right? Shit. So I thought we would actually start from a question we got from a Nerdette listener on Instagram. Okay. Which was, how are you the coolest and funniest person ever? First of all, <laughs> it's true. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We know. I'm very humble. Um, well, first, you have to have a lot of uh, teasing in childhood, right? Like, <laughs> that's what makes you funny. Yeah. Then you have to have a lot of romantic rejection in your 20s. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And if you choose to tell those stories in a funny way... It, Makes you feel better, kind of. Um, I'm not that cool, though. I almost started crying in O'Hare. <laughs> but <laughs> I hear all the cool kids are doing that these yeah, because, days. Because baggage claim was so far <laughs> from the gate. <laughs> that is not a cool person. That's a big, dumb baby. <laughs> so, not cool and funny uh, as a byproduct of uh, trauma. <laughs> well, great. We'll take it. That's okay. fine. Okay. <laughs> so congratulations on Quietly Hostile. How does Thank it feel? You. The same as it always feels. Yeah? I mean, I don't do anything different in each book, right? Well, sure, but I mean, we were talking a little bit earlier, and like you're actually going on tour this time around. And I hate that. <laughs> I, okay. I wish I could, like, just come here and, like, see my real people who mm -hmm. I love, like mm -hmm. all of you, and then go back to Michigan and never see anyone again. <laughs> but they made me go to New York, which I hate. Mm. I hate. Here is what happened the first day I was in New York. The driver is like, he's a nice old dude. He's driving me. He stops. He's like, look out, the, look out the window. I look. There's a dude who's out of his car. He left his car in the middle of the street. Great start. Doors open. Uh -huh. And he is trying to pull a cabbie no. through the window of his cab no. to fight him. No. And I was like, I hate this fucking town <laughs> so much. Like, we wild out, but not like that. No. We're not like that. Like, we're <laughs> better than that. <laughs> and, well, I didn't pay. My publisher did. Paid $10 oh, for a Coke in the hotel. Like, bitch, are you crazy? That's I insane. hate that place. So, <laughs> I was sad I had to be there, but now I'm thrilled to be here. Oh, good. I need a hot dog immediately. Oh, yeah, there you go. I have a confession to tell you, which is that I'm pretty sure I drank the Diet Coke upstairs that you were supposed to have. <laughs> well, I'm going to murder you after this. <laughs> I'm feeling Ho very hope you had a fun life, because it's over. Well, great. This is a really good start, then. I love it. 
So how is life in Michigan? It seems like it's pretty great in general. I mean, I'm sorry, Chicago. I love you so much. Let me say Evanston, because Chicago people are going to be like, Sure, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Um, so Michigan is all right. I don't mind it. I know. Sounds it's a chill. shock. Sounds chill. It's very nice. I don't do any Michigan things. Like, my wife, like, picks fruit and, like... <laughs> goes to the lake. I'm never doing that. Um, <laughs> but I've gotten used to how slow it is mm. and also how wherever you want to go, there's a parking space. You just pull in <laughs> and you park and you get out and no one has dinged your car when you get back in. You don't have to parallel park ever. This is rude. Y'all should move I to feel Michigan attacked. with me. That's my new thing, is trying to get everybody here to move to Kalamazoo with me. Oh, interesting. So. I like it, but then wouldn't, Cal like, wouldn't the same problems just follow us if we all came? Or is it like, is this a select enough group for the rest of This is a select Chicago? enough group. You guys won't mess up the parking. Come on. <laughs> no, it, I, but Michigan is, it's good. Although it's on Eastern time. I was just going to ask. That's weird, right? The news comes on at 11 o'clock. Like what? And I don't How watch the news. How do you watch anything news. on HBO, though? Yeah, like, I don't watch the news because I don't care about what's happening in the world. But smart. Um, it still is <laughs> a nightmare that it comes on so late. That is a nightmare. I mean, even in Central Time, I can't watch Succession on Sunday night. It's just too late. I can't mm -hmm. do it. Um, now think about me. <laughs> I know. I'm it's so even sorry. later, and I have it's to like, put toothpicks in my eyelids <laughs> to stay up and watch it. So we got a number of questions submitted ahead of time from mm -hmm. people in the audience, and we got one from Loria in Lincoln Park, which I thought was great. It's about how you find that your writing practice has changed since having worked on TV. Oh, um, it, it hasn't. Mm. TV writing is like super collaborative, which is good. I like, I don't feel confident enough in TV to be like, well, also my ideas are insane. So <laughs> I like to- <laughs> You can start here and they'll talk you down to here and it's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I tried to put a scene in the new uh, And Just Like That, uh -huh. uh, Sex and the City reboot, where uh, Carrie has explosive diarrhea in a restaurant. <laughs> I really tried. Yeah, I tried yeah, so yeah. hard. <laughs> I tried so hard. And I got my boss on board. We were going to do it. And then Sarah Jessica Parker didn't say. want to shit on TV. So... I was like, okay, girl, but she did puke, which okay. is the second best. To puke. <laughs> so that was really good. But like, so it's collaborative. You can bounce things off people. Uh, they can tell you that your ideas are dumb and would never be approved by the network. Um, but my own writing is just like me, you know, at 3 a.m. Uh, with my little laptop. And that's always what it's been. Mm. So it's still, it's the same. I just don't have a chain to send it up. I, the thing is, I really don't get to blame my mistakes <laughs> on anyone. Like, if my script is bad, they're never bad. But if my script is bad, I can be like, oh, well, Julie signed off on that. And then, like, wipe my hands of it. But, like, if my books are bad, it's my fault. <laughs> So, how much do you want to talk about the writer's strike today? Um, a lot. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> it was easy for me to strike because I didn't have a job. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I've yeah. been striking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, solidarity, I've been on strike, you guys. Um, I, <laughs> I got a residual check <laughs> for $42, <laughs> which, I, like, I have the books, so I am very lucky. Also, yeah. I'm, like, 43. I'm not, like, a 22-year-old kid with eight roommates in a studio apartment in L.A., like, trying to work on a show. But, like, I mean, 
they make so much money and the writers get not much money. So yeah, we'll strike until they give us our cash. Yeah. We're union strong. We're union people. Yeah. It's a union town. Also, <laughs> also the WGA is so scary. And like, if you scab, they will like kill you. So <laughs> even if I didn't like the strike, I like the strike. <laughs> well, so yeah, that segues beautifully into my next question, which is from Sarah in West Rogers Park, who wanted to know, well, first Sarah said, First of all, you're amazing. Thank you, Sarah. And secondly, what do you have in the works for TV? Well, okay, we can all cry together. I just had, so I tried to make a TV show out of my first book. Yes. And spent, you'll read about it. Spent I want to like talk about seven that. years. Yeah. <laughs> wasting my time. Um, but then I just wrote, I was, I did a show in development with Sony. You guys, it would have been amazing. It's so weird. It's about a woman who finds a severed head and, <laughs> but it's like alive. <laughs> and he talks to her and he does like a Cyrano de Bergerac kind of thing where wow. he like helps her through her life. Who are you picturing to play the severed head? I would love to know. Like Nick Offerman. Okay, great, great. You know, yeah. like a cranky dude. Did you guys watch Veep? Remember the dude, like the drunk dude on Veep with the big mug of whiskey? <laughs> he would be Kevin. He would be perfect. Okay. Um, <laughs> but Sony just. We, I rewrote the script like three times, <laughs> and, and they finally, like a couple weeks ago, were just like, we're getting out of the half-hour comedy business. Oh, are they? So I was like, it's okay to say you just don't want to make this weird show <laughs> that you bought. They bought the show and then didn't want to make wow. it. So huh. um, I have no other TV things on the horizon. Hollywood is, I mean, not to be this person, but... It was terrible. I mean, you know what? If I wanted to like reboot something old, I'm sure I could get that greenlit. But if I want to make a weird severed head show, it's <laughs> nobody's gonna let me. <laughs> I have faith for the severed head. I think it just might be a matter Cross of your time. finger. When they give me the script back, I can take it to other networks. Yeah, see, there you go. So cross your fingers. Maybe it's guys. a peacock show. Who knows? <laughs> They can't give me a show on Peacock. You know what fun I would have with that? <laughs> so you mentioned writing a script for Meaty. You got as far as like casting people to play you, which sounds completely bonkers. We shot a mini pilot. Um, you'll never see it. Ugh. I'm so sorry. I tried to describe it so it was like you were there in the book. Um, the best thing from shooting the pilot was I figured out, well, didn't figure out, they told me how they make fake dog poop. <laughs> <laughs> they melt a, like, protein bar. Oh, my God. You know the, like, chocolate oh, bars with the nuts and stuff? Sam. They took a hair dryer, and it looked like real dog shit. It was amazing. I'm so upset. It was <laughs> Incredible. I'm not like a big protein bar guy, but like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to eat one. You won't. You won't. It's okay. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like casting people was so weird. Like it was clear that some of, <laughs> some of the people like maybe found videos of me on YouTube. And so I had to watch a bunch of like New York and LA women trying to do my Midwestern <laughs> Valley girl and like my hand, the way I move my hands, I almost threw up. It was the worst. <laughs> it sounds awful. It was the worst thing that's ever happened to me in like, my life. I can't, you know, I mean, you talk about like people who go back and like uh, watch TV shows they're in or whatever, like that they acted in and like that sounds like hell, but what you're describing just sounds, because then it's like, but this is me. This is like, this is a personal yeah. attack. How yes. is it not? Yeah, the one time I was in a TV show, if you, uh, you'll have to mm. squint to find me. <laughs> I was in my episode of Shrill. Right. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. 
I could watch that over and over and over, <laughs> but watching people like it's say my jokes back to me while pretending to be me was terror. It was torture. Mm -hmm. I, put terrible. me in the Hague. I'd rather do that <laughs> than like watch that again. So this collection is full of delightful essays. You obviously span like a number of insane topics mm -hmm. as of course we would expect. I think my favorite is probably about I like it. Oh. I just thought it was really sweet. Well, and I don't do sweet very right. often. <laughs> Well, I think there's also, like, there's still an indignance to, I mean, it also fits the whole quietly hostile thing, where yeah. it's, like, like what you don't say out loud, but is very heavily implied is, like, fuck you, I like it. Yes, you know? yes. So, I like it is this thing I started doing because snobs are so rude about the things they think are cool. I love a lot of lowbrow entertainment, as you already know. <laughs> I don't know and what you're like, talking about. <laughs> And I got, t I get tired of like justifying, you know how somebody will be like, oh, you like that? Oh, man. And then you feel oh. like you have to explain to this asshole why you like what you like. Freddie, hi. Um, also, <laughs> so I just, I, instead of like arguing, this woman said to me one time, because there was a copy of Gone Girl on our dining room table. She a was banger. Like, she was like, um, you know, that book isn't very feminist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on. I was like, first of all, it's a woman setting a man up. That's the most feminist thing <laughs> you could ever do. Like, get out of here. He was gonna go to jail because of her. That's feminist as hell. Um, but also, like, now I gotta defend Gone Girl. I didn't write Gone Girl. I didn't get any money from that book. I just bought it and loved it. And so now, instead of being like, oh, well, you know, now I just say, I like it. And they can't say anything back. There's nothing to say when you tell someone you like a thing you like. So Unless they really everybody are start doing that. Yeah, I think it's sweet. I like that a lot. Yeah. So uh, speaking of which, Jason and Logan Square wanted to know now that Judge Mathis is retiring, are there any other shows you would consider writing recaps of? First of all, <laughs> he's not retiring. Oh, okay. His original show got canceled, but then like two days later, they gave him a new show. Oh. So he will be back. Okay, great. Okay. But. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> the episodes live on on YouTube. So I'm going to oh. recap them. Oh, great. <laughs> as long as I have access to them. I know I'm a few weeks behind, but I have been like promoting this book but as soon as I'm done we're getting back to the recap <laughs> oh, thank goodness I'm sure there are people who are like I don't know what you're talking about I have a newsletter where I recap episodes of the television show Judge Mathis <laughs> and you would I mean it's as dumb as it sounds but <laughs> it's also very funny and you should sign up to read it because it's good Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so speaking of books, you read a lot. I mean, you know, I try. Yeah. I don't read a lot of people who do what I do because it makes me mm. feel insecure. Um, fragile, very fragile. <laughs> uh, but I read a lot of like horror and thrill. I love a thriller. You, I like I, your taste in thrillers too. I love a thriller. I like anything that makes me turn the pages fast yeah. and like, makes me feel like a fast reader who is good at reading. <laughs> That's what I want to read. I do not read like dense novels with big words. That is not my ministry. I, I want it to be fast. I never figure out the killer. So I'm like a perfect thriller person. You guys remember in um, The Sixth Sense, like the twist at the end, Everybody in the theater knew, I guess. <laughs> and I was the You're only like, one who was like, oh my God, he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And my friend was like, he never changed his sweater. And I was like, <laughs> so? I, I don't notice things like that. <laughs> no. Nuance, nuance and subtlety <laughs> are lost on me. So yeah, I like to read a thrill. Uh, every time I'm like, oh, it was her. And it's great. It is. I mean, there's nothing more delightful, I think, than reading a book and just being completely surprised by whatever happens. (laughs) I'm like a goldfish. It happens to me every single time. So I feel like we could talk for a whole solid hour just about the books we've been reading lately. But have you read anything good lately? Um, Well, I read this, which is pretty good. No, I'm just kidding. I I listened to it. You did narrate it, and it was great. Yeah, I did the audiobook. It's the only time I read my books all the way through is the audiobook. Uh, They're, like, humiliating to me. Like, after they're done, I'm like, oh, this could be better. Oh, this joke is dumb. Oh, I made this joke too many times. Uh, So I don't read my own things. What have I read lately? I just started Chain Gang All-Stars. Oh, my God. It's so good. Okay, good. I'm only... When I say started, I mean, like, two pages. I just finished Um, it. (laughs) I mean, I cracked it open and went, what's on TV? And Uh knocked it... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knocked it off the bed. You're almost done. (laughs) You're cruising through that. Don't trust my book recommendations ever. They are always, like... You have the best book recommendations. I skimmed it while watching Vanderpump Rules, so... (laughs) You know... That's so funny because I feel like you on your Instagram. Can you guys believe that shit? The scandal. <laughs> what a creep. <laughs> I think you have great book recommendations. Thank you. I always am like, oh, if Sam liked it, I'm going to like it. Yeah. No, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at picking out a book that is like not challenging, <laughs> <laughs> but also fun. I mean, you can trust me. I do read, but, like, yeah. I watch more TV than I read. I mean, which I sure. feel like you're not supposed to say as an adult, but it's the truth. <laughs> I think it's all about a balanced diet, right? <laughs> Thank you. So, Lauren in Andersonville said, I'm sure as an author, you're often asked what your favorite book is, but I want to know what your least favorite book is. <laughs> like, what book is first in the bonfire? Lauren says theirs is Lord of the Flies, and this is a hill they are willing to die on. Okay, this is going to sound like a cop-out, but I don't read books I don't like. Like, people who do that, yeah. like, you life only have short. one life. Yeah. If, I, if I'm not vibing with it, I just put it down. I'm like, that's not for me. So, Lauren... You're wasting your time, babe. <laughs> Just read. If, if you don't, if it doesn't hook you by the first chapter, then yeah. use it as toilet paper. Like, <laughs> Throw it in the bonfire then. Yes. Yeah. So how much are you using your writing to process your own shit? <laughs> and yes, I did phrase it that Dang. way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, less now since I have a psychiatrist. Oh, nice. (laughs) Cool, cool. Uh, But yeah, I think, well, I don't write about anything that that I'm not willing to discuss, Mm. you know, because like, I think it's unfair to an audience to be like, you read this thing, if you want to ask me about it, if I'm like, oh, I can't, it's too painful. Like, that's insane. Like, why would you do it? So I think things are pretty worked out by the time I'm ready to write about them. But yeah, it's all like a sort of processing, right? It's like, it's all just me working through my own like tangled inner web. But if it goes in a book, it's like, I'm ready for it to be on the news, right? So. (laughs) I mean, you're putting it in a book. Yeah. So how long after an event then does it take or does it just totally depend in terms of, you know, like I imagine in some of the things you're describing in this book, while they're happening, you're like, oh shit, this is going in the next book. Yeah, there's an essay. (laughs) I I shouldn't laugh. I almost died from anaphylactic shock. too, yeah. Which, wait till you read. It's so stupid. (laughs) But, like... (laughs) It's pretty epic. First of all, I didn't want to go to the hospital. I was like, oh, I don't, I'll just take a Benadryl. <laughs> and my fa- I look like Joe Camel. I just, like, my whole face 
like the whole bottom part of my face, my eyes were swelling shut. And I was like, just, just poke a Benadryl down my closed up throat and I'll be fine. We, <laughs> we, had to, we called the nurse line, like our insurance has like a nurse line. And she like, first of all, this happened while I was on the toilet. Let's start there. <laughs> um, you did bury the lead on that one. <laughs> Kirsten comes in with the phone with the nurse on speaker. <laughs> and she's like, ma'am, can you breathe? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> and like, hey, I couldn't talk. And so she's like, she's like, um, I need you to promise me that you will hang up the phone and call an ambulance. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Why would you do that? <laughs> like, it would be so humiliating to get in an ambulance with like my swollen face. While like, dying? Yeah, while yeah, dying. Yeah. So uh, I just told Kirsten to get the car. This is the middle of the night. It was snowing. And it was like at a point in COVID where like if you had to go to the emergency room, you had to go by yourself. So she, she dropped me off and I was like, well, I'll see you later if I don't die in here. <laughs> and then like an idiot, I stood in line, right? <laughs> and you're like, <gasps> yeah, my breathing, it sounds like shattered glass is in my lungs. And I'm oh. like, uh, uh, like standing like, you know, behind some crackhead who wants to use the phone. I'm like, uh, and so I finally get up to the triage nurse and she's like, could you move your mask away from your face? And I'm like, uh, and I move it. And she like shot back in her chair and got on that? like the intercom and was like, I need a wheelchair. And I was like, I go walk. And they're like, no, no, you can't walk. So I get in this wheelchair and the nurse runs down the hall with me in the wheelchair. And we go into this room I've never seen before. It looks like the morgue, right? It's just, it's just like a silver table in the middle of this room. It has like the surgery lights. And I, you know, and there's six people in there. And I was like, all this for me? Oh my God, I can't believe it. So like they put me on the table and I'm still trying to joke, you know, so that I can put the jokes in the book. You know how it goes. So I'm like trying to joke. So the main doctor is trying to intubate me. Like it was so serious. It was so serious. And I'm such a clown. I was like making jokes like, you know, like blowjob jokes. Like, uh, <laughs> it's been a minute since I've had one that deep. And the dude had to be like, I'm sorry, but it's true. And <laughs> And the doctor had to be like, shut up, Please. I'm trying to save your life, right? So then he like, somebody stabs me with an EpiPen, somebody else stabbed me with some prednisone. And uh, unfortunately for you, I lived. So, but like, as that was happening, I was like, if I survive, this is going I'm gonna write book. about this. So yeah, at what point in that, trajectory like was it when you were still on the toilet yes you couldn't oh, breathe you're like oh, yeah this is it we're going yeah this the is minute it. I looked in the mirror and saw okay this is so fucking rude but y'all have seen mask right <laughs> that's what my face looked like so like when I looked in the mirror and saw that, I was like, the jokes write themselves. <laughs> I was like, I'm so glad this is happening to me. <laughs> so I have a feeling I know the answer to this question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway, which is what are you, like what, is there anything you wouldn't put in a book? Oh, 
Yes. <laughs> A like few, what? a few things. Okay. Um, I have not yet written about my psychiatry journey. Mm. Turns out I have OCD. Oh wow. Of all things. Interesting. Yeah, we thought it was depression all this time, and I was taking all these meds and not getting better. And then I got a psychiatrist, and she was like, "No, no, no, you have OCD." Um, Those and now diagnoses are really common these days. I yeah, like. yeah. And so I take. 300 milligrams of Zola today. Uh, I have OCD very badly. Um, but I haven't written about it because I don't, uh, I don't know what to say yet. Like I'm still like figuring it out and I'm still like doing my exposure therapy. I also have like a lot of fantasy situations that I don't write about. Some romantic, some revenge. Uh <laughs> So I don't put those in the, you know, I keep some, a okay. few things okay. to myself. Not many, but a few. It does seem like you occupy such a fascinating space in terms of sharing so much. Readers feel so connected to you because you do put so much of yourself out there. Mm -hmm. But then how do you navigate also the fact that like you're meeting complete strangers a lot of the time who, who are often, I imagine, feel very comfortable telling you very intimate details about their own lives. First of all, I love that. <laughs> if everyone would just, like, sit next to me at a party and talk to me about their last bowel movement, I, <laughs> I would be in heaven. Um, but I do feel like people know me, right? Because, like, yeah. I do, like, that's me. You're reading it. I would never be like... <laughs> You don't know. Like, that's insane. No, I love it. Um, I get a lot of tears, which is hmm. weird. This girl came to the event on, that I did on Monday and, like, burst into tears. And I was like, I, why? I'm like, <laughs> I was like, come, no, it's just me. But, like, I do... I mean, I write to sort of like have this connection. You mm -hmm. know, there's some writers who kind of like write down their noses at the reader. That is not me. I write from a place of like, we're all in the same like boiling diarrhea. Like, <laughs> let's just look around and say to each other, isn't this terrible? Like, <laughs> and like, they, I do, um, I mean, I, I'm like, a, have a pit of need uh, that I fill up with other people's approval. Um, so <laughs> I love it. If somebody's like, I feel like you're my best friend, I'm like, I am. <laughs> I am here for you. Yes. That's amazing. I, we, love I love you. I am. Oh, that's really sweet. That reminds me, I'm going to say right now before I forget that with the signing line, you are welcome to tell Sam your diarrhea stories, but there will not be photos. <laughs> okay, but here's why. I was late today because of United Airlines. And when people like take pictures, it's so awkward and it takes so long. So like, I guess you could take a picture of me, but why would you want that? Um, <laughs> So next time I'll like yeah. pose and hold your baby or whatever, but <laughs> because I didn't get here on time to do my pre-signing. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Did anyone bring a baby? There aren't any babies here, are there? <laughs> no, these are responsible this is a baby people. Free zone. <laughs> <laughs> a baby can't listen to this. <laughs> So there was a piece in the Atlantic recently about brain age. Did you see that? That is adorable that you think I read <laughs> the Atlantic. <laughs> Ask me what was on TMZ today. What I don't know shit TMZ about today? the Atlantic. Greta, have you lost your mind? <laughs> Sam, what was on TMZ today? What was on TMZ today? Now I'm, now I'm stuck. <laughs> What was on TMZ? Uh, Jojo Siwa got robbed. Oh, okay. I vaguely know who that is. Yeah, that's my news. Okay. The Atlantic. <laughs> Listen, the reason I bring it up is because I think it's a really funny premise that you would get a kick out of. The idea is that the age of like the voice in your brain is not necessarily the same age as like your body that has been through mm -hmm. however many decades of life. Mm -hmm. 
And I just, like, especially reading your book, I just thought that that was a concept that might resonate with you. And I was curious how old your brain is. Well, I think it uh, swings wildly between like 15 and 84. Yes, yes. That's kind of how I feel, though. I think mine is more like four and 78. Mm. Yeah, I, I find like all my high school feelings like still easily accessible to me, you know, maybe it's because I still listen to the same music I listened to mm. in high school. <laughs> so I've kept that alive. Uh, but then sometimes I just feel so crotchety yeah. and old and tired and old. <laughs> There's a line in the book about how you'd move into assisting, assisted living now if you could. And I was yes. like, oh, that sounds amazing. Yes. I wa a nice one, like where you have yeah. your own little apartment and your own little kitchen. Yeah. I would do that. Like those ladies Today, in... Today, I would do it. That makes me think of those ladies in Poker Face. Did you watch that? Yes. Oh, my gosh. That was a really good show you guys watched. That it. was really fun. So, do you... You don't go back and read your stuff? Like, once Never. it's out, it's out? Mm -mm. Why not? It's humiliating. I... It's... I mean, it's really, I'm not a perfectionist, but I um, am a cringeaholic. Uh, and it just, I always think of like how it could be better. And I can't fix it mm. or change it. So I just pretend I never wrote it. <laughs> also though, okay, can we be real with each other? If y'all saw me reading my own book. <laughs> Right? Oh, that's true. What would you say? You would be like, I hate her. No, you can't read your own book. That's, <laughs> no, that's not, that's insane. Well, it does kind of feel like once it's out there, it's out there and there's nothing you can yeah, do about it Yeah, what am anyway, I going to do? So, yeah. What am I going to do about it? People will like it or they will hate it. I'll never know. I don't read reviews. I don't, like, I put things out into the world and then I truly pretend like they don't exist. I don't read reviews. I don't listen to what anyone thinks about it. <laughs> Nothing. It's too, uh, I feel like I'm the kind of person where uh, if someone is critical of me, I want to say, I want to, like, tell them what I was trying. I don't get mad. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But if you understood mm -hmm. that... This is what I was trying to do and blah, blah, blah. But like, you can't do that. I'll never be satisfied. So I just don't engage at all. Was that something you've always been able to, because that's like a tough thing to do sometimes. I oh, mean, yeah. especially for a cringeaholic. Like I can imagine the temptation of looking this stuff up, even if you know. Never. I've never name searched. No Google wow. search. Uh, unfortunately, I've had people like, screenshot things and send them to me no. and like immediate block if you do that yeah uh you know why aren't we friends anymore remember that time you sent me a picture of my wikipedia that's why um no i feel like other people's opinions are theirs they can be out there they're valid i don't need them to like sink into my brain where they will never yeah. leave yeah yeah I was on uh, Fresh Air the other day, and, <laughs> oh, thank Yeah, you. let's clap for that. That's awesome. And some typical NPR listener, I'll uh -oh. say no more. Go on. I'm not familiar, Sam. My, <laughs> all of my contact information is, like, hard to find, but I have a website, and all it has on it is a picture of a toilet, and... <laughs> my LA agent's email and my literary <laughs> agent's email. So someone went to the trouble of finding that and uh, he sent Kent, my agent, um, an, a long email about um, how many times I said like on the podcast. Oh, that's, you know, I, if it's any consolation, you're not the first person to receive that email. Oh no, I email. believe it. <laughs> But because my agent is so amazing, he wrote back, no one cares what your crusty ass oh, thinks. That's amazing. 
which is why he's my agent. I was going to say. He's perfect for me. Can I have your agent, Yeah. Please? But, like, I... I mean, how do you stay alive if you read that kind of thing every day? Yeah. It would make you second guess every single thing yeah. about yourself. Like, 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 did someone already tell you? No. I am working on really? a novel. Are you really? You guys. But here's a, you're clapping now, but <laughs> you know it's going to be weird. It's about uh, an, an old virgin trying to get her cherry popped. Great. Would y'all read that? Nice. Okay. So is it a romance novel? Oh, it's not romantic. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no. I thought it's you... disgusting. <laughs> I thought you were going to be, you were going to say it was about a chick who finds a severed head. Like, I'd read that book, too. Listen, if I can't sell the show, I'll, okay, maybe I'll go. make that into a book. Perfect. So um, I want to run through a couple other audience questions before we get to the end of our time. Laura in Northbrook wanted to know how the idea for all your books covers came about because they're fucking perfect. Laura didn't say that. I added that part. <laughs> this is a disappointing answer. They don't let me choose. I, that's what I figured. I don't get to choose the titles either. Really? No. They do not. The and, gasp in this audience is yeah. really amazing. <laughs> They don't let me do it. And you know what's crazy is I've sold like half a million books for them. Sure. And they still are like, mm, no. I tried, I tried to call, wow, no, thank you. Am I dead yet? <laughs> and they would not let me. They wouldn't do it. I tried to call, we're never meeting in real life. Everything is garbage. <laughs> they wouldn't let me do that. This one, so my editor, like, she is the nicest person on earth. I torture her, right? Because, <laughs> like, she's, like, so sweet and, like, doesn't swear. And then she gets my stuff and is, like, <sighs> you know, she has to, like, cross herself. <laughs> um, she, for this one, she went through the manuscript and, like, pulled out phrases that would work as titles. Oh, wow. So I did choose this from a list of other worse titles. Wow. That I wrote. Right. What were the other ones? Do you remember? No. Uh-uh. I blocked them right That's out of my fair. head. That's fair. Okay, so E in Rogers Park wanted to know what do you miss most about living in Chicago? Uh, okay, first of all, mm. all my friends are here. <laughs> so I miss my friends. I miss a proper hot dog. Mm. Um, I miss, what else do, I mean, I miss everything. Here's the thing. I never, like, partook of any of the Chicago things. Like, I don't go to the beach. <laughs> I don't go downtown. <laughs> I guess I miss just, like, well, first of all, I miss living by myself. Mm. That's a good answer. My wife has two kids. Mm. They are now 15 and 17. Those are ages. Euthanize me. It's too much. It's too much. Oh, my God. And, like, they're not mine, so I can't, like, choke them. So <laughs> I just have to, like, walk away seething. I spend a lot of time in my office being like, these goddamn kids. Um, no, I do. I miss being here. We don't have a lot of good food in Kalamazoo, mm. so I miss the food. Uh, I miss a Lou Malnati's butter crust mm. with sausage. I should go get one after this. I was just going to say, is there anything while you're in town that you're, like, for sure going to eat before you take off? No, because I'm not a good traveler. Mm. And I've had diarrhea worse than usual for, like, five days. Mm. 
so I don't want to set it off. <laughs> also, you're in Fulton Market, so what are you going to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> if I ate a slice of pizza right now, it would explode <laughs> like a firecracker out of my butt. Which could be exciting, but yeah. then I'd be... I'd be having another hospital experience. It's more material, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have one more question from Anna in Logan Square. Anna said, thank you for understanding that The Fugitive is a St. Patrick's Day movie. Oh, as correct. well as the greatest movie of all time. Correct. And Anna wanted to know if there are any other movies that are holiday movies, whether people know it or not. Okay, I have a good one. Okay, good. The Long Kiss Goodnight is a Christmas movie. Right? Okay. Okay, not enough people are clapping. <laughs> it's a movie in which Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson have to, uh, have to kill some bad guys. <laughs> I never know what, who the bad guys work for in any movie. Like, I love Mission Impossible, mm. but what are they about? That's who? <laughs> Who are they fighting? Who is he fighting? You know, I never know. Who, uh, what is the point? What's the plot? I don't know. But uh, Gina and Samuel L. team up to uh, kill some bad guys at Christmas time. There's ice skating. There's caroling. There are bombs and guns. My typical Christmas celebration. <laughs> But yes, The Long Kiss Goodnight is a Christmas movie that you should watch tonight if you haven't seen it. That's a good one. Okay, yeah. I'll do that. Sure. Okay, one last question. This is from Lulu in Evanston. Okay, Evanston. Lulu wants to know what your favorite skincare product is these days. Okay. <laughs> it's life cha It's life changing. Really? Okay, everybody get ready. Here we go. First of all, I don't have any makeup on right now. So, like, you can see my rosacea, but also my skin is all right. Pharmacy Deep Sweep. Pharmacy with an F. Yes. Somebody knows. Oh, my <laughs> God. You just, like, swipe it on your face, and it just, like, fixes your face. I don't know what it does. Uh, you, like, put a little on your cotton round or wow. so whatever like reusable thing you hippies use, and you just, like... <laughs> Swipe it across, it gets rid of your dead skin cells. It makes your skin very soft. Wow. It doesn't stink. It's not expensive. Great. So, <laughs> pharmacy deep sleep. I'm so glad. They I are asked. not paying me, I promise you. <laughs> They're paying Lulu. That's what happened. Yeah. No one has ever offered me any sort of like brand deal <laughs> or endorsement thing. If, if there were a brand, like, what is your dream brand endorsement? Charmin. <laughs> Charmin Extra Strong. Yes. We, okay, we tried to get Charmin to sponsor a tour. <laughs> I mean, that's perfect. Yeah. Lindy West and I are going on tour oh, in the fall. Oh, my God. Are you coming here? We'll come here. Thank you. We'll come here. And so I was like, let's get a bus and let's get Charmin to pay for it. <laughs> and when you have, like, a big publisher, you can just say that. And then people try to get it for you. And, like, the bears on the side and everything, right? No, me <laughs> on the side. <laughs> Sweating with my shirt off, having the worst diarrhea of my life. <laughs> Seven books piled by the toilet. Uh -huh. And I'm like, Whoa. I see it, I see it now. <laughs> Driving across America. For some reason, they wouldn't go for it. <laughs> Well, I still have hope for that one, too. I think it's going to happen. I think we can make it happen. And I can't wait for all of us to see that beautiful bus. And, yeah. And every, I want every stop you take a pack of uh, Charmin Extra Strong. There you go. Um, and yeah, you'll do photos for that one, for sure. Uh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> I will dress in Charmin. 
I will. Oh my God. Well, Sam, thank you so very much Greta, for coming back you. home. This was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out.